For today's lesson, we will be discussing about the sampling distribution of sample means. So in this lesson, we will be discussing how to create the sampling distribution of the different samples and how are we going to identify the means of those samples. So before we proceed, let us define first what is a population and a sample. So a population refers to the total observations that can be made. So let's say you are going to conduct a research and the research is you have to identify the number of sleeping hours of students in a particular school. So that will be your population, all of the students in a particular school. But of course, there can be a lot of students to be considered. So that's why we have what we call as the sample. So a sample is a set of observations drawn from a population. Instead of considering all of the students in that given school, we will just be going to identify some students let's say uh, two sections per level so on and so forth okay so that's why we call it as a sample so you're just getting a portion of the population and that sample represents the whole population for example uh, just to show you an illustration so here on your left is we have the population so as you can see there can be a lot of respondents in this case and if we will be considering the sample so you just have to get you just have to get uh, some or you just have to choose some of the respondents from the population now samples help to make inferences about a population so once you have um, a sample it represents now the population or it will help us to uh, write a conclusion or inference about the given population and um, there can be a lot of samples in a given population there can be different sets of sample so let's say you're going to consider this sample number one sample number two so on and so forth so there are, can be different sets of samples in a certain population now is the statistic or the mean of all possible samples equal the answer is no because different samples may have different um, data so different samples can give us a different mean so let's just focus with the mean here okay now since again as what we know different samples of our population can have different set of means we have to use now the sampling distribution of sample means it is the frequency distribution of the sample means taken from a population so after we identify all of the possible samples we now identify all of the means of those samples and we write it in a table so that is what we call as the sampling distribution of sample means so the sample means may be less than greater than or equal to the population mean so by doing this, we can see what are the possible samples that we can get from the population and we can also identify what are the corresponding means of each sample. This will help us to determine if the given sample or the sample that we chose really represent the population of our study. Note the following variables are used in referring to the population and sample means. So we have the capital letter N which is the population size so that is the size of the population we have the small letter N that is the sample size mu or the population mean and then we have the X bar which is the sample mean now the number of possible samples of size N or the sample size of N that can be drawn from a population of size N is given by this formula so this one is the formula for combination so combination of the population size taken in or the sample size at a time now how do we create the sampling distribution of sample means so suppose that a sample of size n is equal to 10 is taken from a population so let's say you have a population of 500 and then the sample size that you consider is 10 now the mean of the 10 numbers is calculated so you have to identify the mean of the first uh, sample that we have and then after that a new sample of 
same size which is 10 is taken and the mean is calculated again so we will do the same process for all of the possible samples in the given population so that is how we create the sampling distribution of sample means so let's try it with this example the following are heights of five students in centimeters Suppose samples of size 2 are taken from this population. Construct the sampling distribution of the sampling means. So we have here 5 students, Bert, Tony, Danny, Henry, and Peter. And their corresponding height in centimeter, which is 120, 130, 110, 125, and 115. So what we need to do is to take note. The sample of size 2 should be considered. So out of the five, we just have to consider two at a time. Okay? Now to do that, what we will do is we have to solve for all of the possible um, samples that we can get. By the way, let me write here first. Bert is 120. We have Tony, which is 130. Then we have Henry, which is 125. And Peter which is 115. Now, how many possible samples of size 2 can we identify from the population? So what I will do is, we have to identify the population size, and that is 5, since there are 5 students. And for the sample size, it will be 2. So that means we have to consider 2 students. So we have to solve for the combination of 5 taken 2 at a time, and that is 10. So this means now that there will be 10 possible samples of size 2 that we can get from the population. So we just have to list down all of the possible samples and then we will write their height and then we will compute the mean afterwards. So let's write here first. It can be Bert and Tony. It can be Bert and Danny. So let's write here the height. So we have 120 and 130 for Bert and Ta Tony. And then Bert is 120, Dan is 110. It can also be Bert and Henry. And then we have the height 120 and 125. And then we have Bert and Peter. So that's 120 and 115. We can have Tony and Danny. That's 130 and 110. Tony and Henry, 130 and 125. Then we can have Tony and Peter. So that's 130 and 115. We can also have Danny and Henry, which is 110 and 125. And then we have Danny and Peter, 110 and 115. And, and last is we have Henry and Peter, which is 125 and 115. Now, after listing all of the possible samples and then the data for each sample, we can now compute for the mean. So to compute for the mean, all you have to do is just get the average of the samples that we have so here we have 120 and 130 so add and then divide by 2 so that is 125 here the mean is 115 this is 122.5 117.5 again all you have to do is just to get the mean so add and then divide by the number of observations so we have 120 for this one 127.5, 122.5, 117.5, and 120. So these are now the means of our samples. So as you can see, the mean of our samples varies. Um, it can be a bit higher, lower, so on and so forth. After that, so what we will do is in a separate table, you will be writing all of the unique means or sample means that we identified. Because as you noticed, there are some means here that are being repeated. So let's start from the lowest one, that is 112.5. And then we will count the frequency. So it appeared once, so we have one here. 
Next is we have 115. It also appeared once in the first table, so we have 1. And then we have 117.5. It appeared twice. So the frequency is 2. Next is we have 120. It also appeared twice here. So 120 frequency is 2. And then we have uh, 122.5. It also appeared twice. So we have 2 for the frequency. Next is we have 125. So we have 125. It only appeared once. And last is we have the 127.5 which is 1 as well. And then we can just get the total. So add all the frequency, it should be equal to 10. Now after getting the frequency of each of the means, what we will do now is to get the probability. So to get the probability of the mean, all we have to do is to divide each frequency by the total. So this will be 1 over 10, 1 over 10. This is 2 over 10, or if we simplify, it's 1 fifth, same as this one. And also the third one, or this one, which is 1 fifth also. And we have 1 over 10 and 1 over 10. And if we add all of this, it should be equal to 1. So that is how we create the sampling distribution of the sample mean. So we're able to identify what are the possible means of all of the possible samples that we can have from the population. And we're able to identify what's the probability of us getting a uh, that particular mean from the population. So for example, what's the probability that I will get um, a mean from a sample that is 125? So this one right here, so this is 125. So the answer is 1 over 10 or 0 0.1. Okay. And this is just the histogram of the sampling distribution of the sample means. As you can see, it looks like um, bell shape. It looks like a normal curve. If we will, if we are going to uh, plot a curve here, it looks like a normal curve. So it just shows that as the number of means increases, um, the curve or the data becomes or goes toward normal distribution. So let's just have another example here. The height of five plants with fertilizer are shown below. A sample of size 3 is taken from this population. Construct the sampling distribution of the sample means. So we have here again five plants. So that will be the population. And then their height is given in inches. Now, we have to consider a sample of size 3. And we have to construct now the sampling distribution. So let's identify first how many possible samples are there. So let's write here for a while A, insert the plants. So that is 7.5. Just for reference, we have B, which is 10.2. Plant C, which is 8.4. Plant D, which is 8.6. And plant E, which is 9.7. Okay, now the population size is equal to 5 because there are 5 plants and the sample size is 3. So that means we have to take 3 at a time. So let's solve this using the combination. Combination of 5 taken 3 at a time. If you will solve this, so we will get 10 again. So there. So as what we know, there are 10 possible samples of size 3 that can be drawn from the population. So what we will do is again, we have to list all of the possible samples and then we write the height or the corresponding height of each element from the sample and then we have to identify the mean. So we can start with A, B, C. So again, the sample size is 3. The height is 7.5, 10.2, 8.4. Next can be A, B, D. So 7.5, 10.2, 8.6. And then we have A, B, E. What else? We can have A, C, D. A, C, E. A, D, E. 
again I'm just listing down all of the possible uh, samples that we can draw knowing that we have to consider a sample size of 3 B, D, E and C, D, E and then all we have to do is again to write the height so let me just write all of the heights of the plants for each sample now so after listing down all of the heights what we will do now is to get the mean so since there are three um, observations for each sample so we have to add all of the height and then divide it by three so we now have 8.7 this is 8.77 9.13 8.17 8.53 again all you have to do is to add all of the height and then divide by the number of observations which is equal to 3 so in short you're just getting the average of the data that we have for each sample so now we listed all of the means and as you can see there are no repeated values it's okay it's okay if there's no repeated values or uh, value for the mean for each sample it can happen so don't panic so now that we have all of the means what we will do is just to transfer it in another table and then we write the frequency and the probability now since there are no repeated values so just have to write them here 9 9.13 9.17 8.53 8.6 9.07 9.43 9.5 8.9 and for the frequency all of them the frequency is 1 because they just appeared once in the first table and then the total of that will be 10 now for the now for the probability all you have to do is to divide the frequency by the total number of the frequency and all of them are just the same so that is 1 over 10 so 1 over 10 for all Now, if we add all of these, the probability will be equal to 1. So, this is now the sampling distribution of the sample means of our example. Given that, we have to consider a sample size of 3. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something about the sampling distribution of sample means, how to create it, and what's the purpose of it. And see you next time.